Hello, welcome back to Science HD, and you've clicked on the right video. It's season two, episode one right here, but before we get started, I'm going to throw out the disclaimer that our stream did crash on the first, like, 15, 10, 15 minutes of the video um, that we were making live, and we had a good turnout, and then everyone got kicked off because the stream crashed, so uh, we had to restart 15 minutes after that, and um, we were a little... Like the mic broke, stream had to restart. We were a little discombobulated on what to do, and we came back strong. And we had to switch to this mic rather than a mic that can capture all of our voices. And uh, hopefully, we get that all fixed by next week. But bear with us on this first episode and enjoy the show. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess we'll re not restart, but um, we just got done talking about how I'm not in school, just working, and Asher is going back or is in school still, and um, I might be going back to school. And then Rose got a job at a space company, so we'll hear more of that later as well. Um, Nope. Yep. Uh, there we go. So yeah. Anyways, that's what we have been up to. As for um the rest of what we got going on today, we have some updates that are really important. So I'm actually like kind of stalling as well because um this is so chaotic on my screen. <laughs> so I. Believe it or not, I was mentally better prepared for this, but then everything just hit the fan, <laughs> and um, do you see what I'm trying to do? There we go. <laughs> so yeah, everything hit the fan, and I was, uh, everything just, yeah, went wrong. The stream went down, the mic stopped working, and now we have another mic where we have to pass this around like a Pretty baton you know who's talking you know what i mean yeah so don't don't be weird if i'm just like <laughs> come again <laughs> but um yeah so uh yeah new things so we have some new things we have a dog um his name's captain and um what else is new oh yeah this is new this merchandise so i have a crew neck on and that's the science hd crew neck and um it, you can actually buy it for yourself uh i think it's somewhere linked on our twitch so if you want to buy it go for it if you don't want to buy it don't blame you um but it is comfortable and it is actually good quality which i'm shocked by no offense to stream elements who puts the store up but i thought it was going to be like some skimpy little store but i bought this and um so yeah, because I wanted to change the uniform from lab coat to uh, something not as corny looking, because um, I'm just sitting in a bedroom with a lab coat on, so I didn't want it to look as corny. And um, yeah, so that's what else is new, guys? Do you know? Other than just the season two? No, we got life updates, season two, and merch. Yeah, new place. So this is probably for the next year is gonna be the new place. So. That's that's cool. Uh, yeah, the merchandise. So if you want some merchandise right now, you just have to get it. Uh, it's store.streamelements.com slash science HD pod. I'm not this. It does actually make you smarter, too. It does. <laughs> and if you don't even want to buy anything and you just want it for the sense of humor, I did put some little notes on each item of like, I don't know. Just know I put some some little a blurb of my uh, sense of humor in on each item but yeah there's coffee mugs there's sweatshirts there's crew necks there's shirts there's shirts for females there's uh stickers um so yeah 
I don't know how the sticker quality is, though. I'm not going to lie. I need to order that myself because I'm afraid that I put the sticker image on there, but it's, it's going to print out like a whole sheet and then just the center of the sheet's going to have the image. I'm, I'm afraid of that, but yeah. So anyways, more guests. Um, yeah, I, I actually kind of wanted to guess on every episode. So that's my goal. Um, so yeah, because it makes it more interesting, uh, whether that's Asher and then more or... Um, just as someone else i don't know it's up, to, it's up to you it's up to you asher um but yeah if you're interested in someone coming on here or you're coming on here or you want to like say something or if you want to argue um go to science hd podcast at gmail.com and hit us up and i will send you details and we can talk over zoom or discord or whatever uh works best so yeah um but just know before before you email him no one doesn't believe in the globe he, he's a flat earther <laughs> i'm a flat earther <laughs> um, he doesn't believe the dinosaurs were real so just yeah. don't get into that with him <laughs> yep <laughs> and i have a degree in biology <laughs> um so anyways i totally skipped over that more segments i don't remember why i put this here but yeah there's gonna be more segments hopefully there's gonna be like games and stuff i think i want to make up uh, not today because I was just trying to get this whole thing restarted and adding stores and, uh, I just bought this dress shirt today cause the other one stopped fitting me. So, um, yeah, like it's just so last minute. Um, but, uh, more segments I want to make like games or just like activities to do. And, uh, yeah. Updates from us. I swear we just did this already. Yeah. So did I say that twice on here? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think this definitely needed a, a proofread. <laughs> yeah, proofreading is not uh, the, my strong suit. Um, oh, there's a there's a bot in the chat. Cool. Um, so, anyways, um, horn in my side is my first segment, and I actually put this in here because. Well, how I make Science HD episodes is I just live life and then I um, I just like if I find something interesting or remember something interesting, I just want to talk about it. So one of these interesting things is, first of all, uh, horns versus antlers. But uh, what made me think about wanting to talk about horns versus antlers is uh, there's this water buck at the zoo I used to work at. And it's actually this water buck right here. And I forgot his name, um, but he has this weird, he has these weird antlers on him that are like sprawled out and they might look normal at first, um, but those are not normal looking antlers. Uh, here are normal looking antlers for a water buck. And I thought that was interesting. And actually it's kind of hard to re like look up actual research or just people talking about this online. Um, and honestly, if I'd probably talk to a professor, they'd straight up tell me. So once I get a professor from NMU in the biology department, uh, if we ever get one on here, I'm going to ask them stuff about this. But the difference between this water buck, which is also at the same zoo, and the other one is... Uh, God damn it. Uh, tastes like chicken? <laughs> yeah, one tastes <laughs> like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is this one does not, this one does not have any, uh, sort of reproductive, uh, like, uh, organs. So his nuts have been chopped off and it might've been, I don't know what age it was chopped off, but it was probably at a developing age where he was growing those, uh, horns and it made his horns bend like that. And it's also changed his behavior, which that one's everyone knows about basically where if you, uh, castrate a young uh what's the family name for like antelope and sheep um and it's just basically if you castrate like a ram when it's young it will be like nice or a goat or a water like an antelope it'll be like more docile is the word uh towards everything else um, whereas the other one will, they literally told me when I was working at the zoo, they're like, yeah, we don't want you getting in the same area as this water buck because it might kill you. <laughs> like they're dangerous. They can like, I think not this antelope, but another antelope has the ability to kill a lion. 
it's called a sable antelope and they just ram so hard they can kill things that are like twice their size but i thought it was interesting that taking out its testosterone hormone can make that difference so anyways antlers versus horns um so horns are bony cores wrapped around ker keratinous sheath, which is a word that I remember from a uh, biology class, which was just a lot of words, but um, it's just basically keratin, so like your fingernails, and it's just like a really strong structure for horns. And then antlers are just true bone, so like what we've got on the inside of our legs and not keratin and um, they can fall off and then regrow, but horns, they don't do that. They just are staying there the entire lifetime. If it gets chopped off, um, it's like that for the rest of its lifetime. It doesn't regrow anything. It just grows further. And so, yeah, I thought that was interesting too. Do you guys have anything, anything to say about that? <laughs> I can't think of uh, what animal has a horn. I'll be honest. I can think of a lot of antlers. So well, like a ram. Like, like the, like a rhino would have a horn. Yeah. I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's yep, and that one's actually kind of cool because like you could see like the keratin strands. It's almost like hair, when it when you look at a rhino horn. What's another thing with a horn? Ram, goat, antelope. I thought those were antlers. Antelope is a horn. Okay. So. Because those aren't falling off. The ones so from they, this picture. It's a... Here's an example of a horn, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Can they shed their horns? No, they cannot. Antlers are oh, the ones shed, that shed. shed. Antlers, duh. Yes. And uh, those are antlers, as everyone knows what a deer is. That's but yeah, I know. That's why I got it. <laughs> I, th I had a feeling you would say something about that. <laughs> this picture goes out to Rich um, if he's watching. But, um, I did count when I was doing this way. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine points. Oh. Well, maybe that little nub, you see that little nub on the right? Yeah. That could be a point, right? Like the right on his side. So I think one of the rules, no, if you can like hang a ring on it. I think you can hang a ring on our right antler and it's on towards the base. Oh, on the on the brow. On it's the brow a tag? little nub. On the brow tag. Here, I'm zooming this in on the stream. All right, chat. Think. Bring in the hunters. Yeah, where are hunters at? November fifteenth. Huh? Come on. Um, okay. Zoom's gonna happen. I'm sure it's gonna really happen again. We're trying to have another another view. Like reverse the, the slideshow you did. Wait, do you still have that? Yes. Why don't you just flip it? Because <laughs> <laughs> I could just do that, although I'm covering you up. Okay, so, you know what? You're right. Just your eyes peering over. <laughs> You're right, my friend. Ah, oh, because we're screen mirroring on this, I can't do any shortcuts. No Monsters Inc. where Sully's like throwing Cheerios at Boo. Uh, yes. That's what this feels like. <laughs> throwing Cheerios <laughs> at Boo, yeah. So, anyways, I can't figure it out. But we antlers, they fall off just like moose. They fall off and um, regrow. And actually, I think it would be really cool to go out and try to find um, moose shed. Um, don't care about deer shed for some reason. They're still pretty cool. One time I was they going are. on like a like a run, like you know, out back running, and I found like a shed, and it was nice. It was like it was the one side of an eight oh, point. Did you keep so it? yeah, it's in my room at home. Oh, I did not know that. Have you ever found a deer shed? No, I didn't know they did that. I'll be honest. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> so one of my other favorite facts about antlers is um, to regrow them. It might just, like, at first you might just think it's like a tooth. It just comes in and it's solid and you just see like a piece of bone peering through. Um, but that's not the case, even though it is still bone. Um, the case is it comes out with skin over it and it keeps its skin over the entire thing. And that's called velvet because it 
looks like velvet and it probably feels like velvet. It's just fuzzy. Is this antlers or horns now? Cause antlers. antlers do that. Okay. Yeah, antlers do this. Um, and it's got veins in it. It's got like blood pumping through it so it can grow the bone strong. And then as soon as the bone's ready to done be done growing, it starts being really itchy. And then they start itching it off on trees. And there's actually videos, if you look it up, um, moose uh, rubbing their antlers on trees and stuff. And then, yeah, the skin just falls off, and eventually all of it falls off. But it is a little bloody, but it's not, like, super bloody. It's not, like, dripping, but it is, like, red. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Have you seen the photo of, like, I don't know if it's a moose or a, just, like, a white-tailed deer that is, like, in the middle of it rubbing off all the, the fuzz? And it just looks like it's dripping blood in the antlers. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. I Well, probably something like that. I don't know about the part of that same video because there's <laughs> so many, probably millions of deer video but out I there. Mean, like, I think it was like, start, like back when Tumblr was like the happening thing. I think that that was like a very common photo. Like there's one particular photo of like a deer shed or a moose shed where it looks like it's bleeding from the antlers. I don't think right. a biologist came on to like discuss about like what the actual like what was actually happening because a lot of people just thought like man got in a pretty gnarly fight because <laughs> there's like fuzz hanging off you know yeah yeah but yeah last thing about this section is I just thought of it because this this water buck in particular like this exact one was so docile you can go up to it and like touch its butt with like a stick to get him to move and the other one would literally kill you it's just crazy how you could go from zero to one hundred um based off of it they're not sack so um yeah but it's hard to look at research out there for it so if anyone knows more please let me know because i'm wanting to learn about that anyways tastes like chicken this uh was a weird this was a weird section for me because i thought it was interesting because within the past year i learned what two types of chickens are now you might be wondering what types of chickens are there nolan what what types of chickens are there, Nolan? Oh my God, what types of chickens are there? I've been wondering this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I got the name of the thing from The Lion King. When I, I hope you read that in The Lion King voice of mm, "tastes like chicken," oh, I from can hear it. yeah, you can hear it. I can hear Timon. Yeah, and someone is like eating the bugs. It tastes like chicken. That's what I wanted to go for for that stream title. No cap. Um, I might have to tell my dog to go lay down. He's gonna start barking. Captain, no. go lay down or come up here. Lay down. Down. So, yeah, we're dog parents. Um, so, anyways, tastes like chicken. This is what tastes like chicken, probably. Um, I don't know about taste, but this bird right here is a prairie chicken. And this is a female, and it actually just looks like a, um, what's it called? A grouse. Do you recognize that now? So they live in the prairie, and they're just like walking birds, which I feel like you don't see a lot in America. And this is in America, down by the prairies, which is like, where is that? Like South Dakota or something? Yeah. Some, somewhere. Yeah, South, Dakota, South Dakota, North North Dakota, probably like east side of Wyoming is very plain. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the middle and it's not the mountains it's probably plains yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just um, remember driving through it and all i see it. i don't know if they're called is it pronghorn or longhorn yeah pronghorns yeah and it'd be like you would be driving through the east side of wyoming and uh the bottom of south dakota or whatever and it would just be like flat nothing Ooh. like i think i think that we could have broke down out there and like died out there and it was they're so no, but, barren yeah yeah <laughs> he probably has to go on the bright side cell service travels know. really far to have you because there's nothing to get in the way of it Cell service? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I had any. No. Until you hit the west side of the state, where you started getting into like some cities. Yeah, yeah. But even then, it was like I remember going into a gas station, and the gas station smelled so bad. But it was just sulfur water. But going in there, like we've never experienced that much sulfur water because over there it's more common like that. Um, and it was awful. Cool. I'm gonna. I know it's my segment, but you guys are on a roll, and I'm gonna take them to the bathroom real quick. So I don't think he has to. Tell chicken that we're about, to, we're about to look at. you have any idea? What did you say this was? <laughs> <laughs> are grouse, do you know, are grouse the birds that, like, when they're when they're getting ready to take off, they kind of sound, like, really loud, like a I, helicopter? I don't, I don't know. I, I know they're the ones that, like, I think with grouse, you can't, they can't really fly for extended periods of time. 
<laughs> like the ones you gotta like. Like, gotta, like, a, like a chicken. Yeah. Oh, hunt, like a chicken. <laughs> if you're hunting, then you shoot down. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. I forgot. There's name tags. Okay. <laughs> All right. You want it through here? Mm-hmm. So here at Science HD, we have uh, name tags that don't actually say your name, and they just say Science HD on it, and we're sitting so far away from the camera that you can't even see it, but it's the thought that counts. Thank you, Pizza, and thank you, Siren Dawn, for uh, donating those to the stream. I'll be right back. I'm going to let our dog in. Oh, I thought, I thought that he wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I think that's the one. I think that's, that's the kind of chicken. But. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Um... What's your favorite kind of bird outside of this chicken? Uh, I like I like crows and ravens a lot. Crows and ravens? Yeah, we went to we went to uh, what do you call it? Ireland, and it was crazy just hearing the ravens, because because we don't have them here and they sound so much different. I every time I see a crow, I'm always like I I've never looked into it and I always wonder like when is it a raven and when is it a crow? Uh, I don't know. All I know is that the ravens are in the Isles, the British Isles, and crows are not. Hmm. Or maybe they are. I don't know. Why Have you ever heard of the ravens are also in America? That's what I don't know. Have you ever heard of the bird called a grackle? Yeah. Oh, I, I, no. I think it might just be a crow, essentially, or it's very similar to a crow. But so I was reading it by Stephen King, and um, in that book they talk. There's like a line where she turns around and goes, "The grackles know your name." And I thought it was just like a fake bird. I thought that Stephen King made something up. But then later, one of the my one of my coworkers is really into birding. And they were talking about grackles. Yeah, they have that, a really characteristic sound. Yeah, well, I know they sound <laughs> crazy, but it's just like, I never knew they were real. <laughs> well, what's your favorite kind of bird? Um, I actually do have an answer. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm you might think switch about it. it. Rose, what's your favorite kind of bird? You didn't hear that one. I, I, my, my go-to is also a crow. I do like crows. Outside of that, I really like, um, I like cardinals. Oh, blue jays. I love blue jays because yeah. they're kind of jerks. <laughs> like they're just kind of mean, and I think it's interesting. But um, I also have like can I have a really hard time taking photos of blue jays. Like for some reason, every time I pull up my phone, they're gone. I swear. Oh, I, th- I thought you meant. Mm-hmm. Uh, never mind. I'm stupid. Oh, and I also really like Canadian geese. Maybe I just like mean birds. Canada geese. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's this one bird that's literally known for like diving at people. Uh, I don't remember the name of them. Magpies. Yes. From Australia? Yeah. yeah. Dude, Australian birds are just like on another level. I think it actually might be New Zealand, but it's basically Australia. No offense to my Aussies out there. Um like I was th- I'm thinking like worldwide, like Magpies region in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. like cassowaries, I don't, I don't know. Oh. Is like one of the most dangerous birds on earth. Even though they're not that big, but they're like aggressive and they're in that area. Are those ones, do they have like really big beaks? Are they big? Yeah, beaks? they have like a big horn right here. I think I, I think I know what bird that is. Yeah. I was recently looking at a bird called a ghost bird, and it's really weird. It's just weird. Maybe I'll save that for another segment. I'm also one day I want to talk about this frog called the bird poop frog. It just looks like a bird poop. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's this whole shtick. You guys are gonna love the curveball I have in this segment, um, because I just wanted to show you prairie chickens. Because this is a male prairie chicken, um, which is actually cool and colorful. And I think he flares his neck to look like that, probably to attract women. Uh, and male birds always are always more, always more prettier. So no offense to my female birds out there, but... You're going to get a lot of very angry pigeons on your neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, if my car is bird poop in the morning, I'm going to be not surprised. But yeah, that's a that's a type of chicken basically. Um, another type of chicken is oh actually, so this I went on a tangent while I was making this thing and I brought up how this is actually not really a chicken at all, I think, because it's more closely related to a peacock. But I don't remember what I all had to say about that because I didn't write it down. I just put. I just put a diagram of the tree, but peacocks and chickens are already closely related as well. In fact, they're more closely related to each other than a chicken is to a turkey or a duck or finches, but which I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, I also cited my sources on this diagram. Um, 
probably incorrectly, but it's the thought that counts. Um, but this is another type of chicken. A mountain chicken is what it's called. That is a frog. <laughs> <laughs> and its common name is the mountain chicken, but it's not an actual chicken. Does it sound like a chicken? No. So the reason why it's called a chicken is that it gets its name from its size, and it's it's in the Caribbean, basically. Um, it's actually not that big. No. Um, it's probably, I forgot what size it is. I probably should have included that. Okay. But I think it's as big as like a football, possibly. Maybe a little bit smaller than a football. A mountain chicken. As big as a football is really big. I feel like. 20 centimeters long. That's that's not that, that big. That doesn't mean anything to an American. 2.54 centimeters <laughs> to, the, to an inch. Uh, it's mm-hmm. like... One fourth of so it's not it's even four inches. football. It's four inches. Oh. Inch. Yeah, it's not that big, but maybe in the grand scheme of frogs, it's like a big frog. That's bad math. It's eight inches. Three times as heavy as a can of soup, and about as long as a large banana. Large banana, not football. <laughs> <laughs> banana for scale. That's a terrible thing to scale they a frog. They didn't. They didn't have a banana in this picture. They yeah. Couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I just thought a mountain chicken was cool. This next segment is because one of my passions I found in the last year is beer, which sounds like someone that just wants an excuse to drink, but, um, I actually started, so as a kid, I, I liked going to the brewery with my dad, um, because the brewery we had luckily had like, um, really good pizza. So we'd go there for dinner all the time. And then this was like one of those breweries where you can actually see the inside of it and see the brewers start brewing if you're there at a certain time, which I never was because I later learned brewers brew in the morning. But regardless, that made me like really like that culture because everyone was cool at the restaurant. Um, And then I like how each bottle had its own design. I just something about it. But um I kind of forgot about that since I wasn't 21 up until like, what, two years ago. So this past year, I decided to start home brewing because I thought it sounded interesting. And actually, other than it just sounding interesting, I don't know why I got into it. Um, but that made me interested in just beer. And then one day I was drinking a beer and I started looking at it. And then I'm like, where are all these bubbles coming from? Like, I know it's CO2, but, like, why are they just spawning at the bottom? You know, ever thought about that? And so I uh, made this segment called Cheers. And um, not for the TV show, for all the old heads out there. um, But it's just, you know, what you do when you are drinking two beers. Um, But so if you've never had a beer or watched someone drink beer or... Maybe never even had pop, but bubbles start spawning, it looks like, but not actually. Um, They start forming at the bottom of a glass, typically, sometimes from the side of a glass. And apparently, it's all the CO2 molecules colliding together in an imperfection in the glass, which sounds like, how is that possible, especially when you get a fresh new glass? But it's like the tiniest of imperfection in the glass where it's like a little divot that is just big enough to catch molecules of CO2, smash them together and form into a spherical shape because the spherical shape is the easiest shape for those molecules to smash together. Fact check. Um, yeah, actually do you see the same sort of characteristics in boiling? You know, there needs to be a nucleation point is the, the fancy term for it. Yeah. Is the, the, the CO2's nucleation point is in imperfections. There's a, yeah. I almost, I almost did a whole thing about superheating water, which stems from the same thing. Yeah, so a similar phenomenon, if not the same one, kind of. But yeah, it's, it's the same exact thing, the, the, the bubbles in the cracks in the glass. They need to have a spot to start. Yeah, and actually, some beer glasses... <laughs> Sorry, my dog's just staring at me. <laughs> he just made eye contact with me. Um, some beer glasses are actually made with um, designs on the bottom, so... They're made so the bubbles form from the certain spots in those designs. And I thought that was pretty cool, too. So um, that kind of blew my mind. I don't know why. It's really simple. But 
I was really thinking one day, I was like, really, how are these just like, it just looks like a bubble generator at the bottom. Like if you stare at it, it actually lasts a while, but it'll eventually run out. But it kind of takes a while because there's a lot of CO2 in, infused in your beverages, which it's dissolved I, in the same way sugar does. Yeah, except for with by like gas instead of solid, right? Yeah, yeah. but it's the same same basic mechanism. Yep, and that's some cool stuff, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was wondering. I have a question for you guys. What are your guys' phobias? Anyone in the oh. chat? You wanna you wanna go off on the chat? Uh, give me your phobias. We'll look at those, and then we'll go through here first. All right, Rose. What's your biggest phobia? Um. I don't I don't know like the technical name for it, but it's it's just like put me in open water. Like if you would just drop me in the ocean, a lake, a pond, really big puddle, I don't know. Right. <laughs> like I'm gonna freak out. And it's like the worst part is is this total like okay, the fear isn't just I'm gonna drown. The fear is like everything in the water, which that I feel like that's pretty rational. What's not rational is when I'm in Lake Superior and I think a great white shark is gonna come up and eat me. That's when we get into the irrational part. Right. <laughs> I think I blame my dad who made me watch Jaws like one too many times as a kid. That's where it stems from. Um, yeah. And then I also learned like like moose can what dive up to I'm – I'm, the numbers are going to be wrong. But I think they can dive to like what? It's like 20 or 30 feet. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say like 20 or 25 feet under the water. And so there's like this comic somewhere in this world where like someone is swimming uh, in a lake and then a moose comes up and pretty much like impales them. And so, like, now that, that is also an irrational fear now. And that one is more reasonable, I feel like. Still, cra still crazy, still irrational, but more rational than the great white shark. Uh, At least it belongs I, I to guess, I guess, I guess, <laughs> I'm not, I guess. I'm not going to say it makes, I'm not going to say this is, like, probable and that it will happen or that it's likely to happen. I'm just saying in my brain, I'm like, at least it's not something that belongs in salt water. Right. At least moose can be found in fresh water. <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's, uh, not to scare you further, but, um, <laughs> that bull shark. Oh my, oh, no, they, they can get up, they can get up in there but yeah. for a couple miles and like survive for a while. No, they that? can, they it's can get up like halfway across the country. Can they, See, but I don't can know they, how, can they? I think so. Can they get through the, can they get through the Sioux locks though? No, <laughs> that's not where they come from. <laughs> the Sioux locks. They come from the Mississippi river. The Sioux locks. And probably the St. Lawrence. Well, I think that they would be able to come in through, like, Erie and whatever. But I don't think that they can – they're not going to – I don't think they can make it as far as over to, like, where we're at. It's because the Sioux Locks. <laughs> the yeah. Sioux Locks, little known, is actually yeah. partially just to keep out the bull sharks. Yeah, they get right up there and they turn around. <laughs> is, it, is it bull they're sharks? Like, gosh. They have, I wonder, why can they survive? I think it is bull is sharks. Is it related to the amount of testosterone they have? No. Because they – Bull no, sharks are up that, there as like the number one animal, like with the most testosterone. I think maybe not the most, but it's up there. Yeah, I don't think it's for testosterone. I think it just has to do with the way that their gills are structured and able to pick up oxygen and salt versus non-salt water. I guess. But also, they are all alpha males. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> so, anyways, Asher, uh, what's your phobia? Uh, I don't have a really good answer for this, but lately I've been kind of freaked out by like the human brain is like one bump away from losing like a hundred IQ points. And so I'm just, I'm really afraid of just like bumping into something and then just like being wheelchair bound. Vegetable. <laughs> like, Oh, I sneeze wrong. And I have trouble pulling, putting on my Shoot. pants. <laughs> I've never thought about that one. And now I might <laughs> introduce a We're new really fear. Delicate, like. Yeah, that is true. And like, if you see those like diagram videos of like, what, like, how your brain moves when you like get concussed yeah 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 i don't know but we have have we all been concussed in this room no no i have for those of you that don't know i have like a straight up like crack in my head right here because i was playing cops and robbers as a kid in the dark and my friend gave us all flashlights but she asked us to turn them off when we weren't using them because she didn't want her dad to be mad if we killed the battery um, ran straight into a pole. Like, I, spr I sprinted into that pole, knocked myself out, had a goose egg on my head, and then had, like, was, like, throwing up that night. It was bad. Bad concussion. Um, there's not much they can do for him, though, right? They just make sure that you're not, like, bleeding in there. Hmm. But I didn't go to the doctor, because I have medical people in my family, so it's, I don't know. But, yeah. Concussion. 
I, I mean, maybe when I when I played football, I got one, but like <laughs> like a, like a super mild one. I remember actually playing through a bunch of head pain one day, but I'm fine. We we all might have been you know a couple IQ points higher if we <laughs> if we never got concussed. Yeah. It's a good thing they took the lead out of gasoline; otherwise, things would have been worse. <laughs> Yeah, I've never been concussed. I don't even think I've almost been concussed. Because when I did play football, I quit a year later because I broke my arm. So, And I just wasn't having fun. So yeah. I did baseball instead. I, but, only, I only did it for a year. Yeah. I mean, you. I don't want to... I'm a big believer in, in just changing it up and doing something else if you don't like it like that. But doing something's nice. But anyways, uh, my phobia, in case you're wondering, is... Um, I actually think my biggest one is probably claustrophobia, but it has to be extreme. Like, I don't feel claustrophobic sitting in between you two, but if you two lay on me and I don't want to be under there anymore, I am going to be extremely claustrophobic. And that's probably my biggest fear because I'm what, like just the other day, I think it might have even been yesterday, I was watching TikTok videos of this caver, like, um, in probably like i don't know six inches of space is enough to hold his back where he can't like lift off the ground and he's just crawling on the ground and he can't move his back up so all he has to do is slide back and forth but him sliding the only way he gets forward is if he moves this piece of cardboard with him so that his body is able to slide forward and then he inches the cardboard forward then he has to slide on the cardboard and then inch it forward and i'm like that is completely avoidable as a human being. Like no one will ever force you to be in that position. And um, I don't know why people do that. And I don't know how people get over that. Like my body will never be able to. And if I'm reacting through a video and I know it's a video, that's how I know it's probably one of my biggest fears. Well, I, I remember watching Planet Earth, the first one. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not, I'm not claustrophobic. However, when they did the little factoid that some cave divers and people need to dislocate their shoulders oh, yes. in order to slip through cracks and stuff. I think there was one where they had to like break one of their collarbones because it was making their shoulders too far out. <laughs> that's the that's exactly what I mean, and that I, that's even worse because I can't do bone cracking and I can't do dislocation. That's one of my like more like rational fears is like I don't ever have to worry about being inside of a cave. About someone knocking like, you out and then being like, "Find your way out of here." Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. There's three inch clearance over there. See on the other side, and then just crawl away. But um, what was I just about to say? What, what did you just say? Uh, the thing about dislocating and cracking. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bone cracking. If someone just, like, snapped their finger in front of me, I would puke, probably. <laughs> and I'm not a puker, but, That's like, <laughs> or if I heard someone break their arm while we were wrestling, or if I broke someone's arm, or if I had to give CPR and break someone's ribs, that, I think I would puke on the person. Not going to lie. Never going to the medfield. <laughs> well, I might be if I'm clinical oh. lab science. That is a poor decision, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could do blood. I could do blood like all day. Yeah. And I can cut, and I could poke people. But breaking bones, bro. Anything that anything that Ooh. makes noise. I mean, I could probably handle it. It's just like I feel like the feeling of mm. it has to be awful. What breaking your bone? Yeah, like like the feeling of it. Not like oh, audible doing CPR. Is awful, but I think the feeling of like this is just yeah. yeah. I heard I heard it once. I was working on a radio at one of my dad at my dad's gymnastics gym, and uh, someone did a, did a pass right in front of me, and I did actually hear it. It was bad. <laughs> that is terrible. Um, and then the reason why I ask what's your phobia is because another one of mine would probably be. You're gonna give me like a trigger warning in case it's the whole one. No, <laughs> drifting off in space. I th- yeah, that's scary. Yeah, um, I think. What. Is we talk about, oh, so in my work, this is, like, an actual thing that we talk about. And, like, the hard, like, the hard truth is that, like, it's not impossible that this is going to happen. But, like, so part of part of my job and what we're trying to do is right, so remove orbital debris. And so there's debris up there that's constantly colliding. And it's moving really freaking fast up there. Yeah. And so you could be an astronaut like this dude and just be, like, floating up there and then get hit by essentially, like, a piece of shrapnel. And then we're squishy. We're mm-hmm. squishy. And... You can just get hit by something. But what You'll if you're moving a couple of IQ points? Yeah, yeah. from being <laughs> impaled by some, <laughs> by, by some by some of metal. My mom says, Nolan, how about kidney stone fear? Um, yeah, that used to be one of my biggest fears. 
I think I'm less scared of it now because I try to drink more water. I don't know. No I, one doesn't drink a lot of soda because of that beer. Yeah, I, I try not to drink a lot of soda. I actually have been, my soda intake has increased in the past year, but it's still not super high. But of course, more than just soda does it. But I also feel like I could, I could take it. Your family's just dredging up all of your old fears. Yeah. Running out of gas. Fears. Running, yeah, my family is out here. Running out of gas also used to be one of my biggest fears. <laughs> but not like, I don't know. I feel like there's like cla- extreme claustrophobia is irrational to me. These are like everyday could happen fears. And the running out of gas used to be my biggest fear. And I got over that fear when we ran out of gas three times in one year. I was in a car. I was with my grandpa. I was with my sister. And I think I was with my sister again. Something like that. It's either two or three times, but it all happened in the same year. And it was one of my biggest. It just gave me so much anxiety to run out of gas. Every time someone else's car was on low, it freaked me out. Um, but that was before I was my own driver. So, But anyways, uh, floating, in space. floating in Space. This guy is uh, Bruce McCandless. And um, he was aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger, which I don't know what the Challenger did. Does anyone else here know? You space nerds? It notoriously exploded. Oh, did it? <laughs> oh. Well, one of the challengers, right? Because this guy's in space, so. Yeah. No, it was definitely the challenger disaster. I don't know if that was its first flight because it was a space shuttle. Or was that Saturn V or something? Saturn V is the that launch was... system. Yeah. It, it's a kind of rocket. The The challenger definitely was the one that. Wasn't that one of the Apollo missions the... blow up? Uh, n- no. I don't think so. The challenger definitely exploded is all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> well, are there multiple challengers? No, it was a space shuttle, which meant it was reusable. Oh, gotcha. Sweet. Well, he was aboard the non-blowing up one. Rest in peace. Um, but he... No, you definitely knew that. You led with, does anybody know what, what happened with the No. <laughs> no. Well, I was... The way the question was phrased made me think it definitely wasn't that. <laughs> well, I, I kind of had a feeling it might have been, but I also don't have them memorized and... I just didn't know. I knew something something blew up. Is that the one where it goes up and then it just goes back down immediately? Nope. Or does it it went yeah, up for yeah. a while and then the, blew up? The O rings failed and uh, the exhaust gases got out and the whole thing exploded. And um, That was the one with like, the school teacher on it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, was, and their parents were watching? Uh, her whole class was watching. That's awful. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah. We don't know America doesn't talk about that enough. Side note. The NASA was in talks with uh, trying to send up a guy in a Big Bird costume um, <laughs> for this exact same thing that the school teacher ended up winning. Um, they chose not to because um, because they couldn't get the suit in. Um, and so there is an alternate reality not far from our own where Big Bird is a victim of the Challenger disaster. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. That would have been even worse. Would do do you think you would have to like write out Big Bird of the show? I don't know. <laughs> like like I don't like know. what? Imagine nowadays. <laughs> Let's send Mickey Mouse up to space, guys, and then that shit blows up. And then, but you just convinced all of the kids in the world that that Mickey Mouse costume, <laughs> just like the matched every other Mickey Mouse costume at Disney World, is the real Mickey Mouse. No, I, I bet you. I bet you can get out of it by just saying like, oh, he. He landed in the ocean in this parachute. Fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. the magic of Disney. Oh, but the guy that was working in the uniform. Uh, here's his GoFundMe. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so awful. Uh, I wanted. To, I just threw in a couple facts that I didn't know. Uh, he used um, Bruce, the guy in this photo, um, was the first person to do this, and he used the nitrogen-powered man moving unit or something. MMU. Why? Did, I don't know why I didn't put man maneuverable unit or something like that i think that's what it stands for in space is what I've learned. yeah but he was the first person to untether spacewalk um and he was traveling seventeen thousand five hundred miles per hour in this photo uh which is interesting and his last his walk mm-hmm. lasted a whole hour and 22 minutes of that which also reminds me of how i the closest time i came to being claustrophobic was in an mri machine and I was in there for an hour, so I feel like that's probably like similar if you're scared to death in that spot right there. But um, his second walk, this is the cool part, his second walk um, was when the Hubble Space Telescope was deployed. 
and he did a, a spacewalk for that mission. So, uh, but he passed away in 2017. So rest in peace to our science guy, Bruce McCandless II. I want to know. And you could see his man maneuvering unit or something, I think, MMU, in person in Virginia, in the museum. Hmm. So, yeah. In my head, it makes sense why things can move so fast. Like, it, it makes sense why things are, can move so fast in space, but I still can't grasp my head around those numbers. Well, just wait until you hear about what I have coming up. With <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually kind of mad because that's now the second topic that I almost did a whole thing about <laughs> that you have mentioned. <laughs> the MRIs thing, I was, this, I was literally looking at MRI stuff well, earlier today. <laughs> Well, you can always talk about MRIs next time, and I'll stay away from it. Yeah. <laughs> Although I didn't really talk about MRIs, but I have been in one, and that was the, one of the worst. That was like torture, dude. Um, but wait, I didn't give this slide enough love. That's also Bruce from another angle that makes it look even more terrifying because yeah. he looks like he's like at least 100 feet away from the space stuff. On the bright side, there's nothing slowing them down separately. Like the space station isn't slowing down more than he is right so he's gonna like if he just stayed put he would stay at the same distance away yeah they just have all the time in the world to figure out how to get him the, back the same relative lot yeah if he yeah. runs out of gas they have enough time to like suit somebody else up and send him out right yeah i wonder if they have like a modern version of that stuff because that is like a bulky um unit but yeah oh the gerbil of doom hey yeah, we know, we know, we know the Gerbil of Doom IRL. I won't dox you though. Um, <laughs> okay, but how fast is the person in the space moving relative to the largest black hole in the galaxy? Probably past the speed limit. Might, might get pulled over. over. In what fairness, else? he's also <laughs> moving faster than the speed limit now. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is, the part that's hard to wrap my head around when you're talking about space trash, orbital debris. Mm. You don't see a single thing in that picture yeah i actually think about that a lot um so a lot of the orbital debris is in what we call leo low earth orbit um and i actually i i know that i knew the answer to this at one point i do not know the answer right now because my mind has been elsewhere for the last year of my life um but i don't think they're in the same spot you know and also like the amount of the uh, the size of them is still pretty small yeah. And so you're probably not going to... Look at how small he looks on there. Right, like you wouldn't see Yeah, yeah like if there's a satellite four kilometers away, that's still really close, but you're probably not going to see that. Yeah. It's it's what, like the size of a school bus? You're not going to see that. And it also yeah. gives you in perspective of how large the Earth is, this beautiful, like, uh, round Earth. The pale blue dot? Yeah. This round but Earth. But you don't, you don't actually believe in that. You believe in the flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, which makes me want to throw out there somehow, some way, if someone's listening right now, halfway through the YouTube VOD, or if anyone live is listening, if you're a flat earther, please, please reach out. I would think it'd be fun to talk to a flat he earther. Yeah. He wants to talk to people that believe in what he believes. Yes. There's not enough people supporting I'm him. I'm right there with you, brother. <laughs> I will support you. And I want you on to talk to Asher. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's all for my segments, um, to start off the season two mm -hmm. and I'll pass the microphone to the person who chose the name for Neutri Neutrino. I choose you. Oh my goodness. All right. So I had, I, this, this, this is a subject that I've been thinking a lot about lately. Cause you'll see the, you'll see the detector that I have coming up here, but neutrinos are just kind of cool. Um, so you can, you can go, you can go to the next slide. So neutrinos are the, the three bottom left ones here, um, on that list of every particle that there is in the universe, um, that we know of right now. They're this, they're kind of partners to the electron, the muon and the tauon. Um, but they're, they're, one of their characteristics is they're really light. They have mass, but they're really, really light. They're the lightest, um, fermion that there is, um. So because of that, they move insanely fast. Mm -hmm. Another little quirk of them is they don't interact with the electromagnetic force or the strong force, and they only kind of interact with the weak force. Oh, they interact cool. with gravity. And so you will go through um, 
for example, the the statistic I have uh, that I forgot to bring my sheet, but I remember the number. A hundred trillion neutrinos pass through your body every single second. But you will never notice because it is so difficult for them to interact with regular matter. Um, and there's a couple things that make that super useful. Um, you, you can go to the next one. So neutrinos are produced in a whole bunch of um, reactions and uh, nuclear reactions. For example, this one is the neutron will decay sometimes just spontaneously into a proton. Um, no, that's a that's yeah, proton, an electron, and then an electron neutrino. Um, and neutrinos were first, first discovered when we looked at these, these reactions and noticed, Hey, if we add up all the energies of everything that's being produced, we're missing some. Right. Now, one of my favorite scientists, because he just liked throwing away things whenever he felt like it, um, Niels Bohr, just, I remember that one of the little footnotes is that he just decided maybe conservation of energy isn't real. You are covering up the neutrino on that, scar on that slide. <laughs> oh, I just, like, okay. I just uncovered it, but I didn't want to go face camless. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, he, he actually got in a lot of debates with Einstein. He was one of the founders of quantum, quantum mechanics, but I just, I just like that little fact that he's like, well, maybe we should just throw out, throw out all conservation of energy. Um, <laughs> Another little historical fact I don't have a slide for is the neutrino is named the neutrino for uh, another funny reason. Um, they were first postulated to exist in the 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and the guy who made them, who, who came up with them, called them the neutron because they were uh, a chargeless particle. Mm -hmm. And four years later, another guy came up with something called the neutron. As we started to discover it as a massless particle, they knew they were different. One of them was bigger, but they had the same name. And so one of the scientists in a debate was just like, in a conversation was just like, ah, maybe we should just call this one the neutrino because it's smaller. <laughs> <laughs> and that name stuck. Okay, you can, you can actually go to the next slide then. Yeah, I love it when scientists name things. Yeah, that, actually, if you go back to, um, if that's feasible, um, you'll notice that one more. You'll notice that there's three different neutrinos. There's the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Um, those are called flavors. Those are the three flavors of neutrino. <laughs> All right, you can go ahead now. Are they like the tau flavors? <laughs> the tau flavor is my favorite. So one of the biggest sources of neutrinos in our near us is the sun. Because if you look at this diagram... This is a diagram of the nuclear fusion that happens inside the sun. You have in the top, the two hydrogen atoms collide and they spit off one of one of the pro, one of the protons becomes a neutron, which if we remember has an electron neutrino that gets thrown off during it. And then those, those two collide and then you, you eventually get helium out of this process. But there are neutrinos produced in, I think four of those reactions. And so the sun just dumps out neutrinos. And that's actually most of the 100 trillion that come through us come from the sun. Is, um, this might be a tangent, but the, uh, the energy that we're trying to make, I, I think, is that what we're trying to do with like the particle accelerator and everything? Or there's, some, there's something out there where they're trying to recreate what the sun does? Um, we, can recre we can recreate what the sun does. We're actually starting to get, that's what all the nuclear fusion stuff has been exciting yeah. Um, is that just what's happening in the sun? You just take two hydrogen and you smash them together. Um, the particle colliders are, in a way, energy is mass. And if you put enough energy in, you can make a new particle. Mm -hmm. So we smash them into each other and we look at the, the what, what, let's say you smash it into a proton. What the proton explodes into, you then track those and you can reconstruct what happened. What we're doing there is we're looking for new particles. We're testing the characteristics of the ones we already have. Um, if you've ever heard of the Higgs boson, there's yeah. there's another one. If you go if you were to go back, it doesn't really matter though. Um, that was a really exciting thing that CERN, the big, uh, was that recent? Uh, it was years ago. It was it was in the, the teens. Um, that was one of their big exciting publishes is that they this had been predicted and they'd been unable to track it down for a while. And there it was, and they found it, and it was very exciting. Is that going to go, is that going to keep? The, 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 I always want to say it like Gravitron, like the ride. Mm -hmm. Graviton? Is that confirmed? No. Uh, actually, on that slide, it, it says it's hypo hypothesized. Oh. So the standard model describes everything we know about quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. 
Now, notoriously, gravity doesn't like being quantum, right. and we haven't been able to figure out a theory to fit the two together. But once we do, we're going to call the, the 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 particle that mediates it the graviton. I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go back to where yeah, we were. The, the Stephen Hawking was trying to like his whole movie, right? The whole theory of everything. He was trying to find the theory that unifies the four forces. Yes. So is that that is in my head the 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 gravi- graviton? Graviton. Is that what um. Like the missing piece in my head. That in my head, that's the missing piece that would unify the four forces. Yeah. So if if they're you know if they're able to be unified, they have to have a field, and if there's a field, there has to be a force carrier, and so the force carrier will be the graviton. So if we find the graviton, yes, we do find quantum gravity in a way. Um, Stephen Hawking's his big um, crowning achievement, the Hawking radiation, yeah. is kind of just based on a hack, because we need a theory of quantum gravity to describe what happens. Mm-hmm. But he just did some weird approximations where he kind of didn't look at the smallest little bits, but also kind of did so that nothing blew up. And it's kind of just a hack that he did. And he, had, he found, huh. he, he theorized, uh, what, did, what did I just call it? Hawking radiation. Yeah. Okay, you can go to the next slide. He turned on hacks? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he, he turned on physics <laughs> hacks. Okay, so for example, here's the sun. There's, there, we have these neutrino detectors, and you might be wondering... How do we detect the neutrinos? I'll get there. <laughs> but for example, you can get really rough images out of neutrinos and there's our, the biggest neutrino source that there is near us, the sun. Um, so you can take pictures and that's one of the things that's very exciting is um, neutrinos do not interact with regular matter almost at all. So something that's very handy is they have a habit of passing un, un, uh, undisturbed through gas clouds, you know, physical structures, planets, all of that. They'll just go right through it and the energy won't be decreased because they don't interact with the electromagnetic force. That's some like comic book stuff. Right they're, there. they're like ghost particles. Like the yeah. first detected neutrino, um, I'm not going to talk about it yet because I'm going to talk about it when I get to my, my collider. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, but, do you, how do you detect something that doesn't have mass? We're going to, it has mass. It has, <laughs> it has mass. mass. However, it doesn't have enough mass to actually sh- deflect anything. Like it, its gravitational force doesn't really pull anything because it's really small. Mm-hmm. There's there's one there's two interactions that it does that are very very handy, but we can take pictures of things. For example, from the core of the sun, where the the fusion is actually happening. Yeah. No photon is going to be able to get through there without being scattered a bunch. Mm-hmm. So, to actually get a detailed look, we can look at the neutrinos. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, they they go they go like one inch. They get absorbed and then re-emitted, and then they get another inch, and then they get absorbed, and that's all random directions. And so one photon, I think the number is, it takes like seven thousand years for one photon to escape the core of the sun. Wow. Yeah, like every photon we see is like really old. Hmm. Um, Okay, so neutrinos have two interactions that we can see. I forget what the what the second one is, but the first one's really easy. Um, you will see a neutrino come in. You won't see it actually. It will interact with, um, uh, let's say, like a neutron or something, and the neutron will get converted into something else called a muon, and the muon will just be speeding, <laughs> like, like there's so much energy within the neutrino that when it gets converted into the muon, the muon is going faster than the speed of light inside of the medium and that is has a very special name because the shock waves that you'd see if you broke the sound barrier the light version of that is called cherenkov radiation and it has this really nice pale blue color and that's what we're looking at right now that is the sound wave the shock waves from light going faster than the speed of light wait what wait, what am i looking at you are looking at the inside of a nuclear reactor through the water oh nuclear it also looks like it's out of a comic book book, yep. comic book movie. And this one's <laughs> breaking the speed of light. <laughs> how? Can, how? Oh, wait, did you say breaking the speed of light through a medium? Through the medium, okay. yes. Okay. So light travels slower through things than it does through a vacuum. So the universal speed limit is definitely the speed of light in a vacuum. However, if you come in with enough energy, you can go faster than the speed of light inside of a medium. So for for these detectors, we use water and we use ice because the speed of light through those media are pretty pretty slow so when the muons are just shooting through the 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 medium you can see this pale haze 
You can see this little bit of blue light. Now, you can go to the next slide. I think it's, it's the one I'm thinking of. Yes. <laughs> so this is a picture of something called the Ice Cube Collaboration. Ice Cube is named that way because it is a neutrino detector in Antarctica. They did, what they decided to do was they dropped, they drilled boreholes into Antarctica in this very, in this nice grid. It's actually a hexagon, hexagonal pattern. Um, and lowered down these strings of basically cameras, really, really, really sensitive cameras to, to sensitive to light. So what you're looking at on this diagram here is actually a neutrino detection event. If you look at the colors are, I believe red is the earlier times and blue is the later times. It's shaded on that little spectrum. So essentially, as you see the muon going, you'll see the Cherenkov radiation. So you can track the path and you know the direction that it headed through the detector when you get an event. Mm -hmm. And it only, it's only gonna detect events that occur right at the start. You only really know what happens if it collides with the muon right at the beginning. But there you go. And you can, so it's, it's actually Eiffel tower. Yes. For scale. <laughs> it is a cubic kilometer oh, wow. of, um, photo detectors. Huh. Um, and they actually, interestingly, they get the data there and then they have to beam it to via satellite off Antarctica to their actual res their like laboratories that process the data. <laughs> <laughs> like every day, I think they, they, they do like four transmissions of like thousands of gigabytes of data wow. uh, via satellite. Um, so what have we learned from this? this? This Ice Cube collaboration did something pretty cool. It was the first detection of a neutrino where we then traced it back to its source and we found something. So if you go to the next one, we found something called a blazar which is essentially when a black hole uh, overeats, it, it burps, right? It, it throws off really, really heavily ionized radiation and gases. And the neutrino that we found in Ice Cube, we then went, oh, let's go point our telescopes at where that came from. And we found that, which is... Uh, so this is confirmed. Yes. It, was, wow. it is like 4.26 billion light years away. Hmm. So is that like a recreated image? Yeah, that's not real. <laughs> oh, I just had to double check because you're like, this is what we found. That's I'm what like... we found. <laughs> it's like 30 feet away. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we found we found um, an ancient black hole is essentially what we found. Oh, that's cool. That um, we, we hadn't found before, and we did it by just detecting the neutrinos and tracing them back. Interesting. Um, I forgot to say the little side note that I was going to do about the first detected neutrino. Um they were just like looking at essentially bubble chambers, which are these, are, um, you can track the path of things by just misting this big area. Then when you see something come through, it'll move the gas around mm -hmm. and you can like, that's how we found antimatter too, is it was deflected the opposite way it should have been. But yeah, they just, they found it and it was kind of exciting. It was, mm -hmm. They were just looking at bubble chambers and what they did is it collided with something and it turned it into a muon and we looked at the muon. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, hmm. that's I think all the slides I have. Um, Let's see. Yes, yes, it is. Well, how... I had a question. Yeah. Um, I think it's more of it's it's I don't I wouldn't say it's really related entirely. Um, recently I saw a video and I can't remember the exact name. I think I want to say it was like quantum pairs. Yeah. Or how? What's your take on this? Uh, the, the entanglement. Yeah, yeah, quantum entanglement and how, yeah, yeah. like, you can be, like, forever apart and they're still somehow connected. Well, so that was actually, I think that's what the Nobel Prize in Physics was. Not the most recent one, I think the one before that mm -hmm. was, okay, so back to history, Einstein really hated some of the predictions from entangled particles. He, he did, yeah, <laughs> and he took it to his grave, too. Like, yeah. he was he was mad about it until he died. Um <laughs> But one of the things that he was saying was, okay, imagine you have this constructed state called an entangled particle, which means they're very related. So the, the way entanglement kind of works is, say you have two particles, they're entangled. Um, one has, it's called spin, spin up, and the other has spin down. If you measure one, it will instantaneously affect the measurement of the other. Mm -hmm. 
So if you measure them both at the exact same time or like very de slightly delayed and you measure spin up, you know that the person in the other one has measured spin down. Now Einstein said, guys, this breaks everything I've worked on because <laughs> he, start, he made general relativity mm -hmm. as nothing can move faster than the speed of light. Otherwise, if you can get the consequences of events before you see them occur. He imagined you throw a baseball faster than the speed of light. It'll hit you, and then you'll see someone throw it. Um, hmm. Because the light doesn't reach you until after the ball has. And uh, so he, that was one of the things, was that nothing will move faster than the speed of light. Um, but that is an example of information moving faster than the speed of light. So he had a big problem with that. Um, he ended up being kind of wrong. But one of the ways he... One of his alternatives was to say that yeah, but like some of the information about the, the, what they're going to do gets encoded when they become entangled. Yes. So they know at the start so that there's no actual information being transmitted at the speed of light. Yeah. And he called those uh, global and local hidden variable theories. We're like, we can't know it. The variables are hidden, but there's something that the particle knows that we don't. Um, and the Nobel yeah. Prize in physics was actually disproving a large subset of the local hidden variable theories. Essentially saying that there has to be some sort of relativity violations going on in entanglement. We don't know how. And in fairness, you don't, like, you don't really know. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't actually know that it's certain that there is a violation of causality is what it's called. Like, where you see that the, the ball hits you and then you see it. Because... You need to know that the other person needs to make a measurement now, and you don't know that exact time, so you have to be communicating before that. And like, there's 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 some weirdness. I'm not super confident on it, but yeah. yeah. I just thought it was interesting, and I was like, I bet Asher would know about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 mm -hmm. neutrinos. Damn. Mm -hmm. There was actually some uh, statistics that came out that they thought that neutrinos were moving faster than light. That some people uh, were like, "Hey guys, we just saw this go faster than light." <laughs> uh, and then everyone was like no you didn't and then they ran the test again and they're like yeah we we definitely saw this and it actually caused a lot of debate for a while and then they realized there was just a loose cable on their timing circuit and so they were getting bad measurements <laughs> was, was it looking something up yeah i wanted you remember earlier when we were talking about like you're not going to see it because it's so small with the debris because i know we're going to talk about my space stuff next yep. um and i just wanted to be like yes yeah, so that, that that's why right i just i just are they in the same like you have leo and then you have the higher earth orbit um there's a whole tangent in my head and i didn't i didn't get to prepare for this <laughs> yeah no worries um but yeah anyways did you want me to play the video while you talk um i think there might be some audio to the video i don't know if i can get that no i'm i don't need the audio because it's just oh. like it's just like cheesy yeah. like sci-fi music and like there's oh, a perfect. cheesy intro but i really want to get i just want people to see this part of the video which is like a little bit there is yeah i definitely think this is like a marketing video right but you can find this online for like on kmi's youtube there's, there's not a lot of videos but it's like where they put like their press release stuff and everything um okay so what we're seeing right now is called laylaps laylaps is the um spacecraft essentially that we're making to remove orbital debris and so what we're watching right now is an animated video about what we are aiming a uh, capture to look like so right now you'll notice that laylapse is matching the spin of the orbital debris it's about to capture then it'll make contact and start to unfurl uncurl the arms like an octopus like an octopus and so there's actually another video or a column uh so like a paper that someone wrote where they talk about this a little bit um or maybe there's, there's an interview but somewhere somewhere in media we talk about how you know we're just going to take from nature like there's there's tools that nature gives us um and that's where the design idea came from laylapse and also laylapse the name itself is a greek um legend of a dog who was like destined to always catch his um his hunt or whatever um, and so that's why Laylapse is named Laylapse. But so what's interesting is so the whole thing, the thing as a whole is Laylapse, right? But these arms are called Reach. Um, and we actually received a grant that's also, you can find this on the Instagram, um, to continue doing research so we can move into the next phase of our 
development for this exact thing. So the idea, right, is that further down the line, uh, hopefully in a couple of years or more or whatever, um, we'll be able to start doing this exact thing, this capturing of space debris. And so a question I get asked a lot is like, what are you guys going to do with it? Um, and so there's two, there's two things we can do right now. One thing is you push it back let it burn up in the atmosphere that's and then the other one that we're really hoping is that we can get some kind of like collection station to recycle and repurpose the uh, debris that we collect um but yeah so i so this is what i'm doing in my free time which is why i come to science hg a lot without a lot of topics because i'm also in school <laughs> and doing this on the side have you considered just shoving it into the sun <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually it'll get there. Actually, was it, is there um I again, I didn't fact check anything before this. So I and I also didn't anticipate this. But is there can can we throw things that it's way really cuz yeah, it's really does hard. It just come back or like So you you need to like decelerate from the earth because it starts with 17,000 kilometers an hour of of speed. Mm-hmm. Like Actually, I think it's more than that. Around the sun, so you have to lose all of that. Otherwise, you're going to go down, and then you're going to find that now you're just in a different orbit around the sun. Mm-hmm. you got to keep shoving it down until it gets into the sun. Hmm. <laughs> Did not know that. Yeah, it's, it's actually really hard to toss things in the sun. Yeah, you would think it would just be like, all right, throw it while you're in space, and it'll get there in like a few years or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Interesting. I know, it is interesting. I'm really excited about I think this is a really exciting field. I was just thinking about like if you were to tell me like a couple years ago like hey rose you're gonna be working with like removing orbital debris i would have been like what (laughs) no um but it's really cool so the company was actually founded by a couple guys um who graduated from the college that we all go to um and it's really neat because we know we're not in like a huge city for me i feel like i'm in a city because i grew up in rural michigan um but what were their degrees um computer science math double major for the cfo adam and then engineering for austin and then i have the ceo i think was business and something else Mm. but yeah Mm -hmm. they they all went off and like you know worked their their big kid jobs for a while and they all came together to start up a space company it's kind of the american dream Mm. cue the eagle noise (laughs) which is actually a hawk yeah which messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eagles do not make that nice of a noise. It's more like... Ear, ear. I saw a video of a bald eagle recently. They're wild looking. Bald eagle? Bald eagle? Yeah. yeah. They're they are so kinda... big. <laughs> <laughs> they're like up to your waist. And they're not even the biggest eagle. Yeah. Oh, have you seen the, like the harpy eagle? No. No. It looks like a human, like in a costume. I want to I wanna see the, the condors. I've seen one at a Renaissance, Renaissance fair. Mm-hmm. What's the one called? Like the the naked head, like is it the California condor, uh, something vulture? condor? It's a condor, <laughs> but I can't remember. There's like a place before like the name. There's a place in the name like the California or but I don't think it's California condor. But it's like it's like that kind of name, and it's like the typical one you see in. What's the movie with the dodo? Is there a dodo? Ice Age. Yes, <laughs> and the vultures are singing to. Am I thinking of the right movie? There's vult. No. Oh no 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 no. Older movie. Older movie. Uh. No, older. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, what is that movie? What's that movie, chat? Three vultures singing. Oh, is it Jungle Book? I don't know. Is oh, it... it's like that old? Yeah, like it's an old, older movie. Like my older sister would know exactly what I'm talking about right now. So. Condor. Three vultures who are themed after the Beatles. They're meant to be the Beatles. That doesn't help me. <laughs> Why three? There's four beetles. I don't know. I just I just remember three no vultures, condors. <laughs> okay, wait. Three condors. Movie. I'm looking it up, y'all. Represent the beetles. The movie Condor. <laughs> three days to con. Three, three days, days of the. Of the, the condor. Three days. Is that the one you're thinking of? Mm, it's like probably a cartoon. Jungle Book. I think. Yeah, the Jungle Book. It the is the Jungle Book. book is what, yeah. And there's, there oh, is that's four, per four Sam. vultures. Per Sam. It's is that your jungle. dad? Oh, oh, is she in here? <laughs> well, maybe they're all together. Yeah, they're probably, they're all on vacation in spring break right now. Oh, yeah. You know what, Shoffers? Grab a glass of wine. 
wind down. It's science HD time. Um, although we're about to end, um, cause yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they've been here this entire time. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh, thanks mom. <laughs> right on cue. Mm-hmm. Let's pin it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. sweet. Well, uh, yeah. I would talk more, like I said, for if in case there's people in the chat who weren't here in the beginning when we had all our technical difficulties, I would share more about my work. But like I said, I quite literally signed an NDA, <laughs> so I can't. <laughs> um, but follow us on Instagram, and you can stay up to date. Yes, and I and should probably spill all of that um, now. If you want to stay up to date, we have our Instagram, or that's where we'll primarily post information that you guys need to know, like our next live, which is on March 26th. Uh, so set the date, same time, 8 p.m., March 26th. I'll be more prepared. And uh, I'll have a segment because I have a few that I want to talk about. I'm thinking right now. Yeah. And, right and you're welcome uh, back if you want. All right. I got it. It was, it was heroin. Maybe I'll talk about the research I'm going to do. Well, oh. it sounds like Asher's going to be there too. <laughs> the fan favorite. But we also have a new guest, which I won't say their name until they're there, just in case they can't show up. But mainly because I want to surprise the chat. So, um, yeah, I will do inf- more information for merchandise on our Instagram. So if you're interested in that, just look up Science HD Podcast on Instagram, and you'll see Rose and I's face lighting up the sky over there. Um, more merchandise will be bought by us. And another thing I want to throw out there for anyone, I know it's mainly just family listening right now, but if you want to throw anything on this wall behind us, I do want to fill it up with science posters. I have some science posters. I'm going to buy more, and I want to fill it up with science posters. But if anyone wants to add their own little splash, thinking it would be fun for seeing their own thing up here for an entire season, or if you even want to write like a letter or not like a write a letter of just words, but like draw a picture or something. Um, I don't know how old viewers are out there. But um, <laughs> anything, if you want to put it on this wall – Email the Science HD podcast uh, email, which is sciencehdpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, yeah. You just remembered the password to it, too. Yeah, <laughs> I did. First try. <laughs> Logged into it for the first time in like months. First try. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, I think that's all I, w- I want to r- ramble about at for self promo. Um, yeah. Uh, do you guys have anything else? Any uh, things you want to promote yourself on? No. I'm good. Close. Nothing that was I close. Nothing out of the world is related to science at the moment. Doesn't have to be. <laughs> it doesn't have to be science related. I'm actually good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that was Science HD, y'all. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who followed. I'm gonna go down the list and thank uh, everyone that followed. And during the stream, uh, I'm going to say thank you, Sire and Dawn, since you've followed earlier today. Uh, thank you, Winta. Thank you, Rose's parents, Woo-woo. both of them. And thank you, Emerson. Shouts out. Thank you, Audencia. Thank you, Liberty Twitcher, um, which I recognize a lot of those names from my other Twitch channel where I play video games, but some I do not recognize. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, yeah, so that's all I've got for now. Until next week. Should we do the thing that we thought of? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no. so we made no, a... Did... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, Okay, it's kind of cheesy, but... Uh, this is the nerdiest thing I have, I think, is my phone with my pen. It's kind of cheesy, but we're going to end each podcast um, with a... Maybe a question or something. But we're, we kind of want to end it like... Asking, what's your hypothesis? So, like, oh, you guys say it. I thought we were gonna be like three, two, one. Oh, I gotta <laughs> awkward, awkwardly be like, what's your hypothesis? <laughs> okay, um, never mind. Um, scratch that. Scratch that. <laughs> so, yeah, we were thinking of ending the stream with a question today. And, uh, <laughs> does anyone have anything? I don't remember. Oh, wait, no. Uh, let me see if I've got some. Does anyone? So we were talking about the 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 river, Chicago River, oh, the other have, day. Oh, do you want me to? I have one, but I'm gonna talk about it next show if that's what you were looking. Yeah, for let's now. talk about it next show, so we have more content. 
Yeah, so one of the, the one of, well, one of the topics I want to talk about in my head, because I got in a whole debate with my, my family down in Florida when I was on spring break, Uh-oh. Um, is how, how does the dark side of the moon work? Right? Mm-hmm. Because so my uncle was saying that you never see the dark side of the moon, and my grandpa called him a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> and so this whole debate, and then I broke out like YouTube videos, I broke out my pen on my phone. So that's what I'm going to talk about next show. And we're wondering, ready guys, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, your, your <laughs> hypothesis, <laughs> ready? Oh. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to add an ending screen, so. <laughs> <laughs> Science. Yeah. Science. Yep, wait, hold on, I do have an ending screen. Science. Well, thank you guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.